All right, so now we're going to introduce the notion of Romberg integration, which is a application in some sense of Richardson extrapolation uh, to uh, numerical quadrature, okay? Romberg integration. All right. So as I said, it's uh, application of Richardson extrapolation. Applied to quadrature. Okay. So let's make a, a few observations first. Uh, so the first of which is that um, you know we, we studied or uh, we introduced this idea of the composite trapezoidal rule, and as it turns out, the composite trapezoidal rule is nice. Um, when you um, sort of double the number of subintervals, okay. So let's just see what happens, okay. So let's have an integral from a to b of f of x dx, and then you apply uh, the composite trapezoidal rule. Uh, let's call that Tn, where n is the number of subintervals. Okay, um, and let's start obviously with the simplest case, which is one subinterval. So let's look at T1. So T1 is uh, just half f evaluated at a. Um, okay, let's just make life a little bit easier uh, and. Um, change the limits of integration uh, to zero and one. Um, and of course, there's no real loss of generality when you do that because you can always do a change of variables to rescale and recenter the interval to whatever you want, okay? All right. All right, so, so the, um, yeah, so the trapezoidal rule then is over, applied to a interval of length one, so it's just one half times uh, the average or one half times the, the sum of the function values at the two endpoints. Okay, and then T2, so I'm going to use two intervals now. This is one quarter uh, f at zero plus two times f at one half plus f at one. Okay, so, so let's make an uh, important observation, right, which is that if you start with this interval from zero to one, all right, you have the function values used here. When you split it into two intervals, there's a new function value being evaluated, okay? So it's natural to ask whether uh, sort of the composite trapezoidal rule with two subintervals can be expressed in terms of the composite trapezoidal rule with just one subinterval plus some uh, function evaluation at the new point, which is the midpoint, okay? And it turns out that you can. So this turns out to be one half T1, right, plus one half f evaluated at one half. Okay, so that's great because now I don't have to reevaluate. Uh, re it's like f at zero and one. I can use uh, information about f at zero and one, uh, which is already encoded in the composite trapezoidal rule with uh, sort of the previous um, smaller number of subintervals. Okay, so let's see if this good fortune it's like persists when you go from uh, T1, T2 to T4, right? So you have T4, okay, so this is uh, 1 eighth, okay, F at zero plus 2F at one quarter, right, plus 2F at one half, plus 2F at three quarters, plus F at one, okay? Uh, and then again, you can check that uh, you know, this is going to be equal to one half T2, right, plus one quarter uh, F at one quarter plus F at three quarters, okay? So again, you have this nice property that the composite trapezoidal rule uh, for four subintervals is given by some multiple of the composite trapezoidal rule with two subintervals plus um, some appropriately weighted combination of the new function values, right? So 
when you have two, you have four now, right? And then these are the new points uh, which you're adding corresponding to one quarter and three quarters, right? So that's nice that, again, the only function evaluations you need, right, on top of what you had already computed before are exactly the new points which were not present in, uh, in T2, right? So you can keep doing this, uh, and what ends up happening is that there's a, a general uh, formula, right? So the general formula is that you can write T2H, okay, as being uh, one half, sorry, 2N, um, okay, as one half TN, right, plus uh, H times the sum from I equals one to N, F at A plus uh, 2i minus 1 times h. Okay, and uh, of course to start the recursion you want that t1 is equal to uh, h over 2, sorry, um, okay, so so T1 is equal to B minus A over 2, F at A plus F at B. Okay, so, so this sort of initializes the, the expression, and then once you have that, you can compute in this sort of recursive fashion. Okay, all right. So, so with that in mind, so, so in um, what you have now is uh, a framework for evaluating um, composite trapezoidal rule for, you know, it's like um, a sequence of subintervals where the number of subintervals doubles each time, okay? So that's the first part of it. Um, and, um, and what we've noticed again is that there's a very, very efficient way to compute. It's like these sort of, you know, ever increasing number um, so it's a very efficient way of computing the composite trapezoidal rule for this doubling sequence of subintervals, okay? Um, so that you, you never have to reevaluate uh, the function and second points which you've already evaluated it at, okay? So the next thing to do then is to apply Richardson extrapolation to this sequence of approximations. So let's see what happens. Okay, so, um, so you can check that um, the composite trapezoidal rule has the following error expansion. that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is approximately, is approximately actually is equal to, because I'm gonna add the error terms, is equal to h over two f of a plus two times the sum from j equals one to n minus one of f of xj plus f of b plus k one h squared plus k2 h to the 4, plus k3 h to the 6, and so on. So you have these even powers of h in the expansion. Okay, all right. So, um, so then you, you can do Richardson extrapolation on this, right? So you can apply Richardson extrapolation. So, um, so let me um, then outline what we need to do, OK? 
Okay, so this is the outline of the approach. Right, so the first thing is to apply composite trapezoidal rule. Right, um, with uh, sort of n is equal to 1, 2, all the way up to 2 to the m to form sort of approximations. are labeled as the following, right? So I'm going to call this R11, R21, right? All the way up to R uh, M plus 1, 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to construct a matrix, right? Where um, the first column um, corresponds to um, the entries, it's like all the approximations which come from the composite trapezoidal rule for this doubling sequence of uh, subintervals. Okay, then once I have that, I can use Richardson extrapolation to increase the order. So if you recall, I can combine, it's like any pair of these things to cancel out the OH squared estimate. And then I can combine three of them to cancel out both the H squared, H to the four, and so on, right? So that's where the Richardson extrapolation from, comes from, right? So these are OH squared approximations. Right, and then can use them to obtain OH to the four approximations. using Richardson. So for example, so the second column is, is when you've applied one uh, application of Richardson extrapolation, right? So you can have R uh, k plus one, two, right? The second column is equal to four thirds R uh, k plus one, one minus one third uh, R K one. Okay, uh, and it's much, again, it's much more common. It's like for reasons of round off, it's like to write this in the following form. So this is R K plus one, one, which is sort of the more accurate estimate. And then there's a correction factor plus one third R uh, K plus one, one minus R K one. Okay, so this formula should be these two formulas should be familiar if you this just comes from Richardson extrapolation directly applied to now the sequence of estimates coming from the composite trapezoid rule. Okay. All right. So, um, so let me sort of state a more general formula, right? And in general, what you get is that R uh, K J is equal to R uh, K j minus 1, right, plus 1 over 4 to the j minus 1, minus 1, r k j minus 1, minus r k minus 1, j minus 1. <coughs> okay, and um, Right, <clears throat> so this is for um, j equals 2 to uh, m plus 1. And this is for k is equal to j to m plus 1. Okay, all right. So you can put them all together, right? You have this R11, R, 
2, 1, all the way up to R, n plus 1, 1, and there's an R, 2, 2. Um, R, m plus 1, 2, and then all the way down to R, m plus 1, m plus 1. Okay, and then this is uh, this is the one that's like which gives you the best accuracy, right? So this is O H squared approximations. This is O H to the four, right? Um, so you eventually get to big O H to the um, let's see now, okay. H2 to the M, right? Um, actually, 2 to the M plus 1, I guess. No. Okay, so H2 plus 1. Right. Um, yes. Okay, so, so again, it's like uh, with this kind of Richardson extrapolation applied to um, the <coughs> sequence of um, sort of composite trapezoidal rule calculations, you end up getting uh, a quadrature rule, which is then accurate to big O of H to the two to the M plus one. Okay, so that's, uh, that's really nice. Uh, and then the other observation, which we discussed before is that this initial column uh, can also be very, very efficiently computed um, because uh, you never have to reevaluate. You never have to evaluate a function more than once. Uh, and, and so in practice, um, evaluating this very, the entire column is uh, roughly comparable in cost to just evaluating the composite trapezoidal rule for the, the largest uh, number of subintervals which you're going to use in this sequence anyway. So, um, and then again, um, you know, it's like the extrapolation part is relatively cheap because it just involves these kind of linear operations. So I would say that in practice, um, you know, the main cost, if you will, it's like of any quadrature formula is in the function evaluations. So you want to minimize, it's like uh, any redundancy, it's like, uh, you know, it's like in the representation and you want to evaluate as few functions as possible. Um, and so again, um, there is a, a cost that's like to running and it's like this extrapolation, but morally speaking, it's like because the cost is dominated to such a great extent by the cost of the function evaluations, this is roughly comparable in cost then to just doing uh, composite trapezoidal rule um, with, um, you know, it's like two, um, two M sub intervals. So, so that's, that's, you know, some multiple of it in cost, right? So, um, and so that's, that's really very, very efficient. So anyway, so let me just stop here. It's like for discussion around Berg integration.